three, two, one. Hi, Sam here. Welcome back to another pop running form video. So my approach with teaching running is to try and help people have better body awareness so that they can understand when they're using certain muscles and how they're landing and uh, how to maximize their efficiency by minimizing or eliminating overstriding and how to get the, the glute muscles involved in your running. And so with this lesson, I want to just go back to fundamentals and talk about walking because really when we learn how to walk with the, uh, with the glutes and without overstriding, we can easily apply that to running because you know, it's the same action, just faster uh, and with some air time. It's a walk-off. It's a walk-off. So basically the way we're going to start is with our posture, we want to be nice and tall. So what I generally tell people is put a hand on your stomach and a hand on your sternum and draw them apart and that gives you this nice tall neutral spine. You feel like your chest puffed out. When we're running, we're going to have our arms up and back, sort of like nipple height with the hands, um, which is really efficient. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that today as much because we're going to be mainly talking about walking. And with our hips, we want to make sure that our hips are level. So we want to have them not anteriorly tilted like this, but level like this. Uh, so you put a hand below your stomach and a hand below on your lower back and just level them like that. And that will keep your hips nice and level. And that way you can feel your, your glute muscles engaging. It's much harder to do if you're tilted this way. And this also stuffs up your waist, weight distribution if, you're, if your bum's back like this. You want it to be nice and tucked in so you're all aligned. And that way your uh, body can work most efficiently and carry load more efficiently and so on. Okay, so that out of the way, what we're gonna talk about is uh, how we use our glute meds. So, if you think about it, a lot of people, uh, when they don't think too much about how they're running, or they have got like some weakness, uh, they might have their knee crash in a little bit like this. And what that is doing is dropping this hip, okay? And so the way you correct that is to activate your glute med, which is this one, on the outside of your hip. And that brings your hips up from this dropped position where you're on this downward angle to a level position where you're like a neutral, okay? So that's the first action that you want to practice. And you can do this by dropping off a step. Uh, so putting on, standing on a step and dropping your hip down and then leveling it, okay? So that's a really good one to do, especially if you feel like you do have your knee crashing in a little bit when you run. The second thing is, um, you, from there, instead of just bringing it to level, you can actually bring your hip up, right? So when you bring your hip up, um, that is actually using your, your glute med, but also your obliques a bit. Um, but when you do that, you actually unweight this foot, okay? So that enables you to then rotate, okay? So what we're actually gonna get to is a bit of a swagger. So you probably notice in what I'm talking about with this video is a swagger, okay? And the swagger is kind of like a model walk, you know, like a catwalk, where we're doing a little bit of counter rotation, but what, we, what you'll notice is each step we take, we're immediately balanced on the foot that we land on, okay? So if we were doing a traditional heel to toe walk, and we take our, foot off, our weight off of our foot as soon as we take the step, we're gonna fall backwards. Whereas if we take a step with this swagger approach or the strut, then you're gonna find, because what you're doing is you're counter rotating, you're lifting and rotating your hip, but you're gonna automatically be balanced on that foot as soon as you pull your, uh, pull your weight up. And that's what you want, because that means you're not overstriding. So from a walking perspective, this is overstriding because my weight is behind my foot, so if I take my weight up, I fall backwards, and I don't want that. I want to be landing on my weight so that I'm immediately balanced, and then I can go on to the next one, immediately balanced. And then all the power is being, is being put into forward motion rather than you know, this re overcoming this backward motion from being behind our weight, um, from our weight being behind our foot. So that's the first one you can practice is if you lift your hip up and then you rotate, you're gonna see, oh, I'm pointing in a completely different direction now. My foot's skewed, everything feels weird. So what we do to fix this hip rotation is we rotate our foot in the femur. So we rotate the femur and the hip joint to keep our foot pointing forward. And then we also counter rotate our upper body so that we're still pointing forward, right? So from a side-on perspective, we go up, we go round, we counter rotate, 
and we've just taken a step forward, okay? Um, so then you can just do that from one step to the next and, uh, and then you've got that little swagger going on. Um, and another drill you can do to, to learn this is uh, it's the forward lunge, okay? So with the forward lunge, what you do is this, right? And you notice when I took this long step forward, I brought this arm forward so that I kept pointing in a straight line. If I don't bring this arm forward, I'm suddenly looking over there and, and I'm feeling a lot less balanced. But when I do this, you know, say, say I do a slightly sh shorter one, I can come up and I'm automatically balanced on that foot. Whereas, you know, obviously if I don't do the, the forward movement, I'm not going to be balanced on that foot at all. So I want to lift and rotate the hip, counter rotate the upper body and be balanced on that foot immediately. Um, and so you can do that as a drill on its own, just to practice getting that counter rotation and staying nice and strong and moving your whole weight forward, but then do it sh shorter, right? And just join them up until you go into a little walk, right? A funny walk, obviously, because normally we don't walk like this and it gets confusing if, if you're out of sync. <laughs> but, you know, it comes into a swagger. And when you can do that, then you've got the feeling of how you can walk using your, your backside, right? Because if you're standing nice and tall, you, your glutes are engaged and you take this step, then your, your bum is engaged and you're actually pushing forward from here and you're using the, the rotation to keep you pointing straight and you're balanced as soon as you wait, bring your foot up because you're on, on that foot. And so then from there, what you do is just add a little pop. So instead of just, instead of just landing and then waiting and moving forward like a walk, you just add a little pop, right? And that will get you into your run. So you go like this. And what I recommend when you're doing this is use minimal shoes or barefoot because the way when you do that, then you get the feeling of landing on your foot the way that your body wants you to land on your foot, which is slightly ball first, but mainly whole foot. So people call it like midfoot um, because that way your foot loads up correctly. You're balanced on that foot immediately and you can power off of it. Whereas if you land out the front, you're behind it, you've got to catch up before you can power off of it and it's, it's going to be more energy intensive and potentially higher impact and you're not going to get the same elasticity. So having the feeling of the ground when you're doing these exercises is really helpful. So that's really it and basically I would highly recommend you learn how to strut and, and then take that into a run and try practicing it for sort of five, ten minutes, whatever you've got time for before you run, even during, you know, day to day going for a walk. And once you get this feeling of, of how to not overstride and how to use your glute muscles, it will translate into your running um, oh automatically because you'll suddenly be aware of it and be like, okay, actually, I want to get more power. This is how I get more power. And uh, the less overstriding you do, the less you do with the foot landing out the front, the less braking forces you have to overcome, the less impact forces you have, and the more, more that your momentum is carried from step to step, and the more that you can just keep powering forward with each step. So the other thing is uh, with your cadence, when you do this for a start, try keeping your arms up and use your uh, arms to set the rhythm. And you can do like little short steps to start with, right? And aim for a, a higher cadence than might, you might normally be used to. Um, so if you're used to running at 155, aim for 160, 165. And uh, if you're used to running at 160, 165, aim for 170 or, or above, you know. You, I like to shoot for 170 or above. And uh, if you've already got a, a quite high cadence, then you can even go to 180 um, because that's generally considered the most efficient. Uh, everyone has their own opinions about that. Uh, but it's worth experimenting with. So that's really it. Give it a go and uh, let me know what you think. If anything was too confusing, please let me know in the comments and uh, I'll try and clarify. 
otherwise good luck and have fun.